Um, let's go and do that real quick. In my notes, I, or actually my previous version, I hadn't separated the shadow from uh, the ball. Okay, so that also equals false. Oops. And uh, one of the things that you might have noticed there was that this ball kind of jumps, and not kind of, it definitely jumps from basically this point right here where this bounding box collides with the hole's bounding box. Okay, so as soon as it gets to right there, it just immediately goes, um, or it turns invisible, and then uh, you see the animation play through. So what we want to do is... As I was saying before, refine the uh, the collision uh, that's occurring here, and I'm going to create a kind of a dummy object for um, testing the collision. All right, so I'm going to just um, copy out this guy, just break it apart because I know I have a nice circle that's about the same size as this ball, and we're going to go over here to convert to symbol. I'm going to call this a dummy ball like so uh, again let's leave the registration point right in the middle there, and then let's go over here to properties, and I'm just going to take the alpha down to nothing and sure it's kind of hard to see but uh, it's there it still exists let's call this uh, dummy ball as its uh, instance name all right and then jump back over here actually you know what just for right now let's let's leave it at half transparent so we can just kind of see in the uh, See the in the in device central that it is actually doing what we are assuming it's going to be doing, and uh, I'm just going to paste this um, just on top of uh, the ball on the same layer here, so that way we're going to kind of you know, make them be right on top of each other, just to, just so we can again test this out. And all right, so we got it called W ball. Let's go back over here to our code, and this will be now. Let's just come over here and do this um, dummy ball dot x equals, oops, not double song, equals ball.x, and then dummy ball. So why is that? There we go. Too many m's. Equals ball.y, and now let's go ahead and take this guy, and we'll replace this out with that, okay? And let's make this hit test point, and what it's going to be looking for here is um, three settings. Uh, first, the X point that we're going to want to test against. All right, so this is going to be hole.x and then hole.y. Could be any number in there as well. And then we want to set this to be true so that um, it is testing the actual uh, the, the vector artwork here. All right, so instead of this bounding box around uh, the circle, okay, it's going to be testing whether or not this actual circle here happens to collide with that center point, okay? And now let's uh, give this a shot. Okay, so moving this guy up. Uh, looks like the, um, it's hanging over a little bit over that ball there, but that's okay, we can deal with that. And sure enough, um, hopefully you saw there that uh, that worked. Okay, so the ball is actually able to make it kind of midway through into that hole, and then it uh, then it falls in there. Uh, so let's just adjust this a little bit. Um, first off, looks like the center point should be just nudged up a little bit there for the ball itself. And then again, we don't want to actually see this guy at all, our dummy object. So now let's give it another shot. Do, 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 do. All right, and let's see if this feels kind of realistic. So it's moving on in, and boom. Well, you know, it just kind of depends on how you approach this hole. Um, probably if it's going to be over here in the top left, most likely people are not going to be coming at it from, like, this point right here, which is kind of where our ball initially starts at in the animation. So what we might want to consider doing is having it be, like, over here. Or actually just centered up kind of makes sense too. Then and I'd probably even quicken this too as well. Uh for some of you that um are thinking about this, 
Why is there not a stop action at the end of this? Well, this uh, this is just going to loop back over here to frame one anyway when it gets done, at which point it stops again. Let's see. Here. Eh, it's okay. It's not, you know, not going to be perfect, but um, you could always, actually you could always just skip to this part right here where it just kind of drops in. I don't, I'm not sure which one's better or worse. Okay, let's dive back out this way. We're not done because I was thinking uh, what we should do is then reset the board. So if you do happen to fall in there, then the ball comes back uh, to its uh, position here, which is, if I can remember this for later, 160 and 360. And... We can uh, we can write this outside of our function that we currently had in there. So find your your final uh, closing bracket and then type anywhere below that. Above it would have worked as well, or I mean above it, I mean anywhere up top here. But uh, we'll just come down to the bottom. Uh, make this be um, uh, var reset timer. This will be a timer equals new timer. And the important thing here in the beginning here is. Um, this 2,000 is in milliseconds, so uh, it's going to be about two seconds. And then we want this uh, repeat count set to be uh, one. If you had uh, this set to zero, it would be infinite, so it would just keep kind of looping through and uh, firing over and over until you stop the timer. But we're just going to have this uh, fire off once, and um, after um, two seconds, it will complete. So we're going to set up a listener. So we're going to write uh, reset timer dot add event listener, and we are listening for timer event timer complete at which point we will run a function called reset the board or reset board and let's now write that function right below here function reset board and we can put in here event or as I was saying before we could write e just e uh, but event uh, timer event and I've pointed this out a, couple, a few times in the past but uh, if you ever uh, paying attention to these, the uh, the event here, and then this part right here is the exact same thing. So it's always this guy, and then this guy matching up, or maybe I shouldn't say always. It usually is. And then um, so in our opening and closing brackets here, just want to uh, reset things. So we're going to write uh, whole dot go to and stop. This will be reset back to one. Then ball dot visible is going to equal true again. Uh, we want ball shadow. Dot visible to also be true and ball dot x is going to be 160 ball dot y is going to equal 320 and uh, do, 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 do. we want ball shadow dot x equal to ball dot x plus 20 ball shadow dot y equals ball dot y again plus 20 we want to set our uh, boolean variable is falling uh, we want that to be false okay so that resets that guy and I believe that's all we have to do except we have not actually started our timer okay so we want to take reset timer and then just come down inside of our um, collision detection code and we're gonna write uh, reset timer dot start and we should now be ready to go. So well, let's see what happens. Device central, come on, load it up. Be nice if I kind of just stayed open. Okay, so let's move this up over here. It's gonna fall in, and sure enough, it does uh, end up coming back that way um, since there is a bit of time it takes for it to actually fall in all right we might want to make it more than two seconds so oh, I mean actually that's all right it seems to work out okay so um, yeah this is um, kind of the beginnings of well, some sort of I guess labyrinth type game where you got to just manipulate the ball past these uh, these uh, holes and I guess it's nothing like a pinball game, come to think of it. But nor did I say it was going to be a pinball game. It just happens to have pinball-looking artwork. So anyway, that is uh, that is where we're at for this guy. Look at this. I got flipped all the way around there. That's kind of cool. And uh, we will talk more in another video.